So how do you find other musicians for your band or your musical project that you're interested in creating? In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you the answers. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Musician Mastery. My name is Daxton Page. So how many of y'all have felt frustrated trying to find other musicians to be a part of your group because you didn't know where they were, you were looking, you know, and you just didn't know where to start potentially, or maybe you were looking in one area and you're like, man, this, there's gotta be other ways to find musicians. Well, there are a bunch of ways to find musicians and I'm gonna be giving you some free options so that everybody can go out and find musicians and not have to worry about like paying for ad space or memberships to certain sites or whatever it happens to be out there. Let's break down the easy free ways that every single musician can go out there and find more musicians to be a part of their projects and their bands and their groups or whatever you wanna be. All right, so let's dive into number one. Social media, this should be obvious. If you already have an audience of some kind. So it doesn't matter if you're a cover band, right? You've been doing the cover thing for a long time and you've built up an audience of people that know you as the cover band artist. That's totally fine. Or you could be someone who's known as being a solo artist and you typically just do things by yourself. That's totally fine as well. Whatever your position you're starting out in, go on social media and leverage the audience that you already have. Some people I know I can hear it. Some people are saying, Dax, I'm not even in either position. I don't even have a band. I've never even tried. I don't even know where to start. Start on social media. How many friends do you have that potentially listen to the same music? Even if you know they're people that you actually know or if they're just social media friends. But there's an audience of people that are following you. You might as well leverage what you have. Now let's say you're not in the position of just very first starting out, you know? Because that audience is, is kind of limited. You know, you're kind of just limited to people who know of you and may have maybe have heard about you on social media. If you've posted videos of yourself playing on your Facebook or your Instagram and people follow you, I still consider that like a solo thing. So hopefully maybe people are like, oh, okay, well, I fall under that umbrella. But the whole point is you've got an audience. You've got people. You're a cover band. You're a solo artist, whatever it is. And there's people that know you for that one thing. And there's probably some musicians that follow you too, because musicians, you know, guilty, we like to listen to music. Who would have thought, right? So what you can do is leverage what you have and try to get access to band members just by hitting people up on social media. Post something on Facebook or on Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. Just post it and be like, hey, I'm a musician looking for some other people who are interested in being in a band. Think about it like you're making an ad, right? You're trying to figure out that if someone read this, they'd be like, yeah, that sounds like a perfect band I'd want to be a part of. So make sure that whenever you're making these ads, wherever all these places I'm going to show you, wherever you post them, make sure all your ads are very carefully worded to attract only the people that you really want in your band. You know, make sure that you use words that are very specific to what your goals are. If your goal is to be a serious band and only do originals, put that in the ad so people aren't surprised when they show up for their first audition or rehearsal, okay? So social media is the first place that we can go and put our information out there and sort of get people who have, may have heard of us in one light to go, oh, he's looking for a musician. Well, I can play that. Maybe we work well together. And then you start holding auditions. You know, that's another thing too. Don't feel like you're in a weird position to hold an audition. An audition is totally normal. Musicians are used to it. It's pretty common practice. And honestly, Every musician should be able to perform an audition and not be like, oh no, I have to go and perform in front of people. Honestly, if that's the position they're in, maybe they're not ready to be in a band. Maybe they've still got some work on their craft they need to do. But if you've got someone who can just audition for you and play something, that's actually a good sign that like, oh wow, this person's used to playing in front of people. They can hold it together. They don't buckle under pressure. That's a good thing. So whenever you start getting some leads from whether it's social media or these places I'm gonna show you, Make sure that you actually like qualify them and attract the people that you want to be in your band, okay? You'll find some good people out there, so just be diligent, okay? Strategy number two, Craigslist type places. I'm gonna put Craigslist, but there's other websites like maybe Reverb Nation or Band Mix that you could go to that where you can find some other musicians who you might potentially wanna work with. Uh, maybe even things like SoundCloud or Bandcamp where you can go find some other local musicians who are doing their own solo thing and have posted some of their music and looking to join a group. Well, Craigslist is actually a very interesting story. Let me tell you how effective this is because people sleep on this. They say, oh, what are you serious, Dax? 
Craigslist, did you just seriously put that as an option? I did, let me tell you a story. I could tell you a couple stories, but I'm just gonna tell you one. When I got into my very first band, which is the band I'm actually a part of right now, we've been a band for eight years. You know, I've been a part of like school-oriented groups, but not like an actual band where we're the bosses, right? So my very first band, it was me and this drummer. We knew each other uh, from family friends, right? Like our families <laughs> were friends with each other and then they, they knew this person who were like, hey, there's a drummer who wants to play? And I'm like, okay, well, I'd love to you know, know a drummer. So that's another thing too, just like having a friend or something. Oh, you play drums? Maybe you could try. Well, here's another thing too. If you're going to pick your friends, make sure your friends actually have the same ambitions you do. I remember when I was in elementary school, I actually had a friend who was like, yeah, dude, you could play guitar. I could play like bass. We could totally be in a band together. And we started trying to write songs and you could tell very quickly that this, this was something very serious for me and it was just kind of a fun little pastime thing to do that week. You know, it wasn't really a serious pursuit of theirs and so we didn't actually end up making the band. We kind of just sort of had one or two little get-togethers, writing sessions, and then that was it. So don't fall prey to that, you know. I mean, it didn't hurt our friendship that much, but it kind of stung a little bit because it was something I was really passionate about and I kind of got this, whoa, me and my friend are gonna do something together, and then they kind of flaked on it. So just be aware that if you start picking friends to be in your band, that you gotta make sure that they're actually serious and have the same goals that you do. All right, so Craigslist, back to my story. I was trying to get this band set up, so me and this drummer were like, man, we gotta go look for a bass player and, another, and a singer or another guitar player even. So we start putting ads out on Reverb Nation. We start putting stuff out on bandmix.com and all these different sites that are basically musicians seeking other musicians. And it kind of stunk. We got some real creepos that responded to our, our ads. And so we were just like, man, this sucks. We're gonna go to Craigslist, last, last ditch effort, right? I mean, that's apparently the lowest on the totem pole, right? Well, the very first ad that responded to us on Craigslist was a guy named Ryan and he's like, yeah, I play bass and actually I have a buddy who can sing and play guitar. We were like, are you serious? Let's set up a rehearsal. Very first rehearsal we had together, we you know, said, let's, let's all learn a group of songs so we can all play stuff together when we show up. So we did and it went okay, but then at one point, the singer slash guitar player was like, well, let's just like jam something. So I came up with a little chord progression, bass player came up with the bass line, Drummer actually started off with you know a drum beat, and we we're like, all right, let's just put it together. Let's see what happens. And we wrote a song together. This is people we met on Craigslist. We got together, wrote a song. That was a song that ended up being on our first record. Now it's not a super co complicated song or anything. It's I think it's a good song, but it was just one of those moments of like, wow, we finally found some musicians that actually work well with us, and we didn't have to go and meet creepos and all this kind of stuff in the meantime. We, it was like. Very first uh, person who answered our ad was these people. And so that was one of the greatest little godsends we got from Craigslist is like, wow, we actually got people that were serious about this. Now, let me tell you the magic secret about Craigslist and why it works counterintuitively. Every musician is thinking, well, man, I mean, worst come to worst, I can go put an ad on Craigslist. That's my last ditch effort. So all the musicians who are on Craigslist are either one of two musicians probably. They're either the musicians who were like, I don't know, just Craigslist, and they just started on Craigslist, or they're the, the musician who's been through so many other websites and has just had it with this process of trying to find other musicians. So all those people who are actually serious somehow end up aggregating on Craigslist because they've all gone through the other websites and potentially posted on social media and not gotten the results they wanted. And now all of a sudden, all those people are in one area and it just happens to be Craigslist. So do not sleep on Craigslist, I'm telling you. I was able to find those two members which formed the band and then when we had to find two singers later down the road, we were able to find both of them through Craigslist. This is not a paid advertisement for Craigslist, by the way. This is just me telling you what's worked for me. And it was very surprising because it's not what I expected to work at all. I mean, how many people here are thinking like, Dax, are you just joking around? Did Craigslist actually work? Yes, it did. It was absolutely fantastic. And I think because of the reasons I mentioned earlier about all the musicians who are actually serious have gone through those trials and ended up in Craigslist, it's actually a good little well to, uh, to draw from, so to speak.
How's it going, everybody? What's your experience been like trying to find other members for your band or your project? Leave it in the comments. Also, be sure to like and share this video, as well as hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It really helps out this channel a lot, and it's a great way for me to know if I'm providing enough value for you guys. All right, let's jump back to the episode. All right, number three, your local music store, right? Now, this could be Guitar Center. This could be Sam Ash. This could be some mom and pop guitar shop or drum shop or just full music store it doesn't you know it doesn't really matter what you want to do is go find the fancy bulletin board that's got all the advertisements on it for shows and other musicians seeking musicians i'm telling you if you go to guitar center the one that's in your area or sam ash or whatever and you find that bulletin board you'll find at least two or three ads on there with other musicians who are trying to form a band a very specific band sometimes it's cover bands, sometimes it's solo, sometimes it's like a group oriented original band. It, all different kinds of things happen there, but go check them out because you may find an ad that you actually would like to answer. You may be like, well crap, instead of me trying to go find the band, that band already, already exists and they're looking for me. You may find that situation, but just, you know, if that doesn't happen, uh oh, what am I going to do? Well, make your own ad. Now you get to be the person that the other person sees your ad and goes, wow, there's another musician who's thinking exactly the same way as I am. I want to go be in a band with them. So that's one of the things that you need to take advantage of is go to these mom and pop stores, go to a couple of them, find where they all are in your area and just litter. You know, don't, don't like spam these places, put up one ad per uh, store, but just canvas the area. Every music store has got one of your classified ads in there. That'd be pretty nice, right? That means if someone goes to this store, this store, this store, they're all gonna see that image or that ad that you put up. And so you may get some good, some good hits that way. Music stores are a great place that musicians like to go and hang out at. I mean, seriously, go to a guitar center on a Friday or Saturday. There's tons of people up there just so they can play guitars. And musicians are hanging out. Sometimes people meet each other in guitar centers. I've had friends that I've met that have developed our friendship and we just met one time in guitar center. Things like that happen. So go to these music stores and potentially find some bulletin board space where you can put an ad up or answer an ad. Or sometimes you just wanna mingle, hang out. And if you see someone who's, man, I've been looking for a bass player and that guy is really good or that girl is really good. Maybe I should be like, hey, you're really good. Are you in a band? They're, they're not gonna be like, what are you asking me if I'm in a band? They'll be like, uh, yeah, I'm in a band. Or no, I'm not in a band, I just, I just like playing. Now you have an opportunity to be like, well, I'm starting a band and you sound kind of in the same realm that I'd like to sound. Would you like to be in a group together? Boom, all of a sudden, now you've got an in, you've got a lead for a new, uh, new band member, okay? So go into your local mom and pops or your big corporate music store, it doesn't matter. Hit them all up, put an ad in every single one of them and go check out all the ads at each of those locations because like I said, you might find one that's a great match for you. All right, number four. This is the one that everyone has probably heard of and it's connections. So what do I mean by that, connections? Well, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, it's all about who you know. And there is some truth to that. There are a lot of really talented musicians who are just hanging out in their bedroom and no one's ever really heard of them because they don't really know anybody and they don't know how to get seen and all this kind of stuff. So what you can do is figure out who you know or who, or, excuse me, or who you know of that's in your scene and is playing shows, hangs out with other musicians, and might have a tip on a new lead. This is one of the things I don't see a lot of musicians taking advantage of, which is actually your biggest, probably most valuable resource for finding new leads for new band members, is if you have someone who you know is in the scene, right? They, they're in their own band or they play around, they probably know a lot of musicians and they know who's in a project, oh, they accidentally didn't work out in that project, but they're free to do something, I know they're really talented, now all of a sudden you've got like, well, I actually need a bass player and a drummer, and that's what they are? Maybe we can all get hooked up, right? It's an easy access for leads. And when I say leads, I'm saying people who could potentially be in your band, okay? So accessing these people, and even if it's not musicians, it could even be promoters, it could be venue owners, because solo artists, maybe you're looking for a guitar player. There's solo artists that just play guitar that will just play by themselves at cafes, at local restaurants, at venues on certain nights, and you need to find out from these venue owners and these promoters, man, who are some people that are just kind of on their own and doing their own thing and maybe potentially, and that's another thing, potentially 
looking for a band to be a part of. You could start getting leads all these different ways. So as you've seen throughout this video, there's lots of different strategies to find musicians nowadays. You just got to be diligent enough to go and execute each one of these because where most people be, you know, they end up frustrated and you know unhappy with all this is they only do one or two of these. You know, for instance, they go on Craigslist and maybe they didn't have as much luck as I did, right? So maybe they go on Craigslist and like Craigslist didn't work, all right? And then they stop, right? You need to make sure that you hit up all of these all simultaneously. Heck, if you can get lots of people getting interest in your band, you may even develop a little bit of competition, a little bit, a little competitive spirit in the musicians where it's like, oh, well, a bass player answered this ad that you put out and another bass player answered this ad that you put out. Well, now if you have an audition, you want them to be sign like, hey, you show up at four, you show up at 4.30, and you have 30 minute auditions each so that they see each other. That's gonna, and you let someone know, yeah, I got a couple bass players coming in today. So, uh, you know, thank you so much for being here and being a part of it. That was like, oh crap, I'm not the only one. I better, I better show out and I better do my thing, right? So you can use this kind of stuff to your advantage to help make being a part of your band seem desirable. And on that topic, to kind of close out the video, make your band sound desirable and actually make it desirable to want to be a part of. No one wants to work with someone who's rigid in their thinking, never knows how to give and take, doesn't know how to give criticism, doesn't know how to take criticism. No one likes being in a band with someone like that. So make sure that you make your band an environment and a culture, so to speak, that people would want to be a part of. You know, let them know that you have structure. Let them know like, yeah, I know what we do in our rehearsals. Like it's, you know, it's free form in this section of the rehearsal, but it's all structured this way and we can hang out and talk and get to know each other and just have a good environment for people to want to join your band in. If everything, you know, you show up and everyone's mad and you're throwing stuff right before the rehearsal and you're angry, okay, let's start. Maybe no one's gonna wanna be in your band because you seem pretty aggressive. So just watch out for these type of things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it and can hopefully start to find some more musicians to be a part of your band. So I wanna give you guys a free gift. It's called the Masters in the Making eBook and it's available totally for free by clicking the link in the description. So pick that up. I hope you guys get that because it's gonna shift your perspective a little bit as to what most musicians think about the music business whenever they try to get started, they try to get a band going together. There's a lot of conceptions and expectations about the music business that are frank, frankly just wrong. And I wanna help you kind of blow up those myths and get you on the right path, which is what that is designed to do. So pick up that free gift in the description and I will see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone. Hey.